The Gemara in Shabbos discusses the mitzvah of Mila. There's three parts to the mitzvah of Mila. There's the mitzvah of Mila cutting off the foreskin. There's the mitzvah of Priya revealing the membrane. And the one we're going to focus on is a potential third aspect is a Indian of Mitzitza, of suctioning out the blood from the child. In other words, and the Gemara in Shabbos, Kuflam and Gimel and Beis, and the Rambam quotes it in Hilchas Mila, Parakid Aleph, Halacha Lamed Tayin. He points out that the purpose of Mitzitza is for health reasons. And therefore, to stop the baby from danger, and that's what the Gemara talks about, firing the Moel. Why do you fire a Moel? You don't fire anyone for any mistake. But by not doing the mitzitza, you are causing the child to become in suffix sakana. And what kind of suffix sakana? Because the assumption was, the way some of Farshim interpret the Ram and the Gemara, is that by doing a mitzitza, by doing an intense suctioning, you increase the blood flow and hence prevent internal clotting. That's why... If you don't do mitzitza, that's why the child's in danger. However, today with modern science, my modern science debates the issue, saying there is no health benefit to mitzitza. It's not true about increasing the blood flow and preventing clotting. There's no health benefit to doing mitzitza. And 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 they because they make an observation, there are many circumcision done in hospitals all the time and obviously they don't do mitzita and yet we don't find the child being in danger so the question is we have on one hand the Torah telling me mitzita is for health issues and science is telling me there is none perhaps we'll touch on another question later is what happens if Modern science says not only isn't it a health issue, but by doing mitzitza b'peh, by suctioning it out with your mouth, you are causing harm to the child. That we'll get into later. But just before that, what do we do when we have a conflict between natural, what the medical science tells us today, and what the Gemara, what the Halacha says, the, the Halacha says, the Gemara says to do a mitzitza for as health benefits, and the Gemara that's the Gemara, and medical science seems to doubt that issue. So it's more, it's more of a general question. That's just one example of where medical science goes against what the Gemara says. But what, is, what kind of approach do we take when you have the Gemara telling me one thing and medical science another? So... Rev. Avraham Isaac Hakohen Cook, he felt that the Gemara always wins over science. And Rev. Cook, who was also, we'll see, he was a big Metzitza person, he felt Metzitza Bepeh, he was into Kabbalah, so it's not surprising. But obviously he's going to say his belief is Metzitza isn't just a health issue. It's, now it's part, of the, it's part of the question here. If mitzitzah is just a health issue, then maybe we could put antiseptics and find better ways to heal the child. But if, and that's what the very show raises the question, but if mitzitzah is part of the mitzvah of Mila, like some Rishonim say, so then you have to do mitzitzah, because it's not, it's not just for health benefits or other things. So again, so if, if it's dangerous, then we have to get into whether you, what what's considered dangerous and then obviously if we would consider it a danger then one we one would be prohibited to do. But so in general Rev Avraham Yitzchak Hakohen Cook, he always went with the Gemara with the over the modern science. And his reason was, according to Rev Cook, Rev Cook claims that modern science at best could only provide an opinion that is worth considering. In other words, you, can, you never could say anything with certainty that it's definitely going to happen, so it's enough 
to cause a suffix in halacha. If, mod- if modern science says this is dangerous, okay, let me think about it now, let me check it out. But it doesn't, isn't necessarily a bad day danger, it causes a doubt in halacha, and then, and then we have to see, you know, that even that he limits it. Rav Kook, that if it goes, ag- that's only if it doesn't uproot what Chazal is saying. If you could, in if modern science, you could work, say it works together with Chazal, then he's saying maybe it could create a doubt, but if it's going to uproot what Chazal is saying, he's going to disregard it completely. But either way, Rav Kook is very skeptical about science because he's felt that science can't prove the long-term impact. How could you say that because people didn't get mitzitza, they were healthy? You don't, you haven't followed the child for 15, 20 years. Maybe because they didn't have mitzitza, something happened later on. So he just claims, he's not arguing that the chazal know everything, he's, that no matter what they say is always right. He's arguing from the angle that he doesn't trust medical science, that the nature of science is they're constantly learning and changing, and therefore what they say now is enough to create a suffix and take pause. In other words, there are other re- Rishonim, the Chuvas Harashba, and others, another Rachronim, the Yamshel Shlomo, they also take a much more skeptical look at um, modern science. they talking in a totally different context because the Gemara is talking about the concept of a trefa. A trefa is an animal that's going to die within 12 months. So the question is, whatever we discover an animal that the Gemara says is going to die within 12 months of the trefa, but we see in reality it's not going to die within 12 months. So the Rechuvah Zarashba is very very strong. He takes the extreme side. He says, anyone who claims they've seen this animal live, this trade for live for more than 12 months, either you're lying, kind of like the Gemara says, whoever claims that they're from the Chashmonayim, the Maccabean dynasty, either they're lying or they were slaves because the whole family was wiped out. So he says, anyone who claims they saw it, it's lying. It doesn't. Or, if you're not lying, it's a minor miracle. A nays happen, but it's not the normal way. Or the Yamshel Shlomo, the Marashal and Chulin, he doesn't say it as strong, but he says the laws of trade, like all halachas, were going bus a row. We go by the majority. And therefore, any type of deviations we see, we view them as minor exceptions. It doesn't affect the rule. So both the Tshuva Sarashba and the Marshal both have a skepticism about science and they don't even want to deal with the implications. The Uber of Cook, who he's just saying he accepts modern science, he's just saying is, but I'm not accepting it as a Torah's Vada, I'm accepting it as it definitely adds to the equation and therefore Rav Cook usually says, Allah we go with Khumra. In other words, if Chazal tell us something is dangerous and medical scientists is healthy, so we're not going to do it. But similarly, if Chazal, and if modern science says it's dangerous, then we say it's health, you know, so then also, if it's just a health issue, we're not going to do it. You know, Mitzitz is a different situation because he holds Mitzitz, uh, perhaps could be a local motion, but see part and parcel of the mitzvah of Mila, and then it's not enough of a danger, apparently, if Cook would hold, that you stop doing the mitzitzah, even mitzitzah. Of course, if we reach the stage where it was provable, so then, you know, then maybe we'd get them, because there are people who do uh, mitzitzah bepek, because they feel it's not a proven danger. You know, many we see do a mitzitzah bequeef, you don't have to do, there's one discussion whether you need mitzitzah at all today, because maybe anti, you know, septics are just as good. Even if you assume you do have to, maybe bequeef, if the point is to suction out suction of the blood, so Matitza Bakli could do the same trick. What's one of the riots for Rev Avraham Yitzchak Hakohen Cook? Is one of his proofs is that the Gemara in Yuman that pay Gimel and Aleph, the famous Gemara summon sick on Yom Kippur, so it talks about patient doctor relations. So if so it says if the doctor says it's dangerous, 
and he has until we go with the doctor. However, if a person feels that the doctor says it's okay, you can fast, but the patient feels not that way, of course, there are limits, you know, the patient has to be sick, and you can't just say, well, I have to eat, but within reasonable limits, you know, whatever the Gadarma and the Gemara are is not our discussion now. But the, person, the doctor says, no, it's okay, you can fast, and the person says, no, I can't fast. Also, I'm, I, I can feel it. And it's a pasuk that we say, leave your day, Amar, you know more than anyone else about what pain you're in. And therefore, we accept what is permitted to eat even on Yom Kippur. So Rav Kuk says, if it was true that we accept modern science and doctors as absolute truth, then how is the person allowed to eat? It must be. It only creates a suffix. But any type of suffix, we go with humra because maybe it really is a danger. Or, as he, or he says, the Torah tells us in Parshas Mishpatim, Yerapo Yerape, that it gives, from here the Gemara Baba Kama tells us it gave license to the doctor to heal. Uh, what do we need a Pasuk? To tell, give license for a doctor to heal? In other words, of course he could heal if he could help the person, so that's what Rav Cook points out. You need a headset because since it's only based on a doubt, what he's saying isn't certainly going to help, so therefore you need a special verse. So that's the sheet of Rav Yitzchak, Rav Avraham, Yitzchak Cohen Cook, his skepticism about science. So the Rashba and the Barsha are even stronger. The Rashba the, wants to say it's a nace or it's a, or you're lying, and the Barsha just says, no, it's just a, it doesn't affect the principle. The, Rav Cook is saying at least it creates a suffix. We do address, you know, we do address the issue. So we see that's a, that's where Cook felt very strongly that the Gemara, when the Gemara says something, it's based on reality, and therefore medical science only creates a doubt. So it's a conflict again. So at least that's what he says by Metitza, by Metitza, because that's not only a health issue; that's part of the mitzvah of Mila. There was a famous case as well. The so that's. Um, We'll get back to um, we'll get back to Trefa in a minute, but um, there's a case where they had I think in the late 1700s in Germany where they made a rule that all burials have to be suspended for three days. Why? Because there was an incident apparently that someone was buried alive. And the effort to ensure that no one is buried alive, if you wait three days, and certainly after three days, you'll know if a person is alive or dead. That's what the secular law was in the country. That's what they, and there was a discussion, someone did a claim that maybe Judaism should accept that. Why? Because if there's a, there's a lacha, normally we bury a person as soon as possible. However, if it's a family is out of town and have to come in, so we do how we we wait for for the burial. We postpone the burial because that's considered covered ames. So some rabbanim claim that if it's covered ames to wait for a family to come in, how much more so it's covered ames to find out if he's still alive to wait three days. That's why that's the, by autopsy we permit one to do an autopsy to put a murderer behind bars because we think it's covered ames. Or it's okay if you could save someone's life. So certainly if you could save someone else's life. So to hear by burials, that's what someone wanted to claim. However, the Chasim Sofer, as well as the Maram Shik, felt strongly opposed this idea. It might have been some claim, it might have been Rabbi Yaakov Emden, but he stro- and this could have been an issue also with Moses Mendelssohn, who later became known as part of uh, one of the fathers of the Reformed Judaism. But I think he, they have, he wrote a letter to the Chasim Sofer. So the Chasim Sofer and the Maram Shik both feel very strongly. The Maram Shik seems to go with Rav Cook in the sense that he's, the, he's skeptical of the science. I mean, is that true? Like we can't figure out. We don't have to wait. We have a tradition that we can find out right away. The cessation of breathing, you know, that, that's a separate share in terms of brain death and that, but the Gemara gives us guidelines and that's it. And therefore, 
there's nothing to talk about. And we're not sure, in modern science, we're not sure they're always changing. Was as opposed to the Chasim Sofer, who seems to say if the Gemara brings it down, he seems to go with the absolute truth of the Talmudic science, that the rabbis, and the, when they say we know that it's going to happen, we can find out right away, so therefore we're not going to put that in jeopardy, we're not going to doubt that. In fact, one of his writings are that we see that, that and if at that time they said that was the definition, so too we don't worry about it later on, like the case by Kalayim, by mixing plants, that's to be a minimum di- space difference. Based on, on, so based on the info they got, Kazagov and the early scientists, and they even quoted a biblical pasuk. So even though today that maybe those early experts with the thinking isn't really operating anymore, but still, nevertheless, the fact that um, so that's what the Chazan so if it gets into and we'll have to come, we'll come back to this as well is perhaps even the science and the Gemara, as we'll explain why, according to them, why even though it's a new science today, perhaps there is some relevance to what they thought back in the time of the Gemara. And as opposed to, so one hand we have uh, Avra Yisaka Cohen Cook, very skeptical and it creates a suffolk la halacha. You have the Chasim Sofer and the Maram Shiku were radically against the laying burial. It has it in the Gemara it says that still we know cessation of breathing and therefore either because they don't trust the science or they say the Torah is the Gemara is absolute they're not, they're not going to deal with the Shaila. On the other hand we have Rev Shir Yagon and Rev Avram Ben Maimonides, the Av- Maimonides' son, the Rambam's son, who basically writes, the Gemara talks about in different places, in Shabbos, Kuf Tes, Kuf Yud, Kuf Yud, Allah, but a Moikat and Imsachim, they talk about different remedies. And it talks even remedies that you have to take of certain in Suffolk Sarkana. So we know modern sciences, they don't work today. So should we continue taking these medications even if they're proven not to work? So Rav Avram, the Rambam senses, absolutely not. We see that Chazal only knew the science of the times, and therefore once we find that the science of the times is rejected, we can reject our opinion as well. And that's why he brings a right to Gemara Sachem on the Sadi Dalid Amid Bays that we see there's a discussion among the secular the secular scientists and the rabbis on what happened to the sun at night. And again the whole Gemara goes into detail, but the Gemara seems to say Chachme Yisrael acquiesced to the Chachme Umasa Olam. You know, Rabbi Otam has his own chana Gemara, but that's a Rav Shiri go and point out as well that you can't rely on what it says in the Gemara if it's based on the science the rabbis only knew as much as the scientists of that day if later on these therapies are proven to be no good then we discard it so we basically have we have the case of Rav Cook and that school that sought the skeptic that by Metzitza Metzitza stays all it can only create in if you have a conflict between the Gemara and the Halacha, the Gemara wins. We still do Mitzitza. In the case of the burial, we still do burial one day, even though they argue three days. Because maybe that's based on a Masora in terms of what is um, and what the definition of death is. So therefore, not everyone agrees. So that's what the Chazim Sofa writes, Chazim Ish, Ramosha discusses it. It actually could depend on what we're talking about. Because we see the Gemara of the Zara of Yochanan, he learned the cure from one of the Romans. So we see the hours he learned Chachach from Chachmei Uma So it could, it could depend on what the, where they're getting. If it's a health issue, so wait. So if it's a Masora issue, let's say like, um, like Trefa, the Allah is, let's say, that if someone, as we mentioned before, if the Gemara tells us what the definition of 
trefa is that someone, an animal is going to die within 12 months, that's a trefa. What happens if we find an animal that they claim is a trefa, but we see it lasts longer than 12 months? So the Chazanich has the whole discussion. We assume halacha, we view it as a trefa. There's a whole discussion of Ramot Chazanich that perhaps the definition of a trefa by an Adam, that's different than a trefa by a trefa by an animal, that's considered that's part of the halacha motion. We see that that's built into the Mesora. So something which is given down based on tradition, even if we find that the, the medical, the science has changed, we don't accept it. The Chazanish points out, he has an interesting um, um, explanation. He says, he, the, the Chazanish acknowledges there is definitely, a, there could be a difference between the science today in time of Chazal. He recognizes that today scientists will claim that these animals are in a trefa. So the Chazanish has an interesting theory he claims that the animals have been forced over time to adapt to the new surroundings, and if a certain evolutionary change has happened within a particular species, and that's an absurd, and however, the Chazan it says halacha should not should not be changed to adapt to the new reality, because halacha is eternal. And based on, he wants to say that was the natural, the real reality was the way it was. It's only because different things happened, they forced the animals, so therefore the fact that they were, the, the animals changed because of their conditions doesn't change. The halacha works in the pristine state, and therefore whatever the Gemara says is a, is a trefa, that's what you go with. In fact, we'll get into it another time. That's the whole Chazanish about that certain things the tray for it's built in those are the years of Torah between the Chazal tell us the first two thousand years are years of Torah Babo, two thousand to four thousand are years of Torah and four thousand to six thousand are years of the Mashiach. So <coughs> the question is, what do you mean I'm not learning Torah now or maybe I'm not, but there are people learning Torah. So what does that mean? So the Khazanis suggests that maybe it means that during those years that during the Zman HaMishnah Gemara that the Zman HaTanayim HaMoram before they codified the Gemara that that's when they got the definition of a trefa and so whatever was defined during that time that has to remain and therefore because that's based on a Masora based on a tradition and therefore if it's so if it's based on a tradition so then like trefa, everyone agrees the laws of trefa still apply, and we go with what the Gemara said. In fact, you know, that's what, you know, Rabbi Chana Wasserman said similar, that once the mission of the Gemara were, were completed, all decisions are final, and we don't have a greater basin to overturn anything. Therefore, halacha can't change, even though he recognizes that the scientific knowledge in the Gemara is not what science says today, but he's saying for a technical reason you can't change it, but maybe fundamentally we would if we could. That was built into the system, something based on a Masora and a tradition. So that's the question. So everyone agrees if it's a Masora. What happens if it's something to do with the natural sciences? So then you have, so before I get to that, there's one more, there's one, ex, one interesting, another shot from Rav Dessler. Rav Dessler claims that Chazal used to use the science of our time to interpret a a tradition we had. And therefore, if we find the science during the time of the Gemara to be flawed, it's not that we change the halacha, we have to find a new explanation based on our new science why it's true. So for instance, the Gemara tells us in Chulin, Nun Gimel Amin Aleph, a Drusa is the same type of trefa. And basically, you know, trefa is an animal that dies within 12 months. This animal is attacked by a wild cat. And the Gemara says this animal that which is attacked by a wildcat is a din of a trefa. And okay, so now the question is, what is, why if you're attacked by a wild, if you're attacked by other animals, you don't automatically have the status of a trefa. Why a wildcat? So, so the question is, why does someone die sooner if they're caught by a wildcat? So Chazal told us because they at least they thought then that they secrete the certain venom, a poisonous thing, and therefore it causes them to die earlier. The 
question is, with Zvanazel, we know it's not true. We know wild cats don't secrete venom. venom. So, 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 so what do we have to do? We have to speak to our scientists today, and they have to come up with a reason why would the Gemara say that someone, the trafer remains. I don't know, the Druze is a trafer. So therefore, modern science would argue that maybe the reason is because a wild cat caused deeper into the skin, and therefore maybe more dirt gets in its infections. So you have to come up so Rav Desker, so Rav Desker, on one hand, he, he, he still preserves the halacha that a, that a drus is a trefa, as well as he, is in, as well as in, he, he encourages scientists to explore and search for contemporary theory to explain chazal. So, that's, so everyone agrees to a trefa that, that doesn't change the laws, it's prohibited. The issue is, what about things which are just let's say health issues. So health issues, like um, most told that the uh, health issues in the Talmud, they no longer apply and perhaps it's even us to take them because they don't help. And maybe only if they cause no harm then you could take them, but certainly um, we reject that. So they say that was based on the science, it wasn't based on tradition, it was based on the scientists of that time, and therefore that's why. So within so, um, so on one hand, you have the tray for everyone agrees. On the other hand, regarding different, and it looks like the Talmudic things most agree to, regarding some other issues which are in clear cut. So when Chazal are basing things on the science of the time, so if it's not based on Allah Moshe Misinai or some type of tradition, so if it's just a health issue, so there are many who are rejected, like the Magna Ram. The Gemara talks about eating fish and meat today is dangerous. Yet, doctors say there is no danger. So the Magna Ram writes that no longer applies. He says it's a pure health issue based on the science of the times, and we reject it. However, the Nodiruda writes that no, we're still Machmir because maybe there's some other reason, so we have to go through the specific cases and, you know, and come up but the different rules. But that's how um, they discuss regarding trefa by a human being. So trefa by animal, that's clearly uh, based on a Kabbalah tradition. But a trefa based on human beings, that um, seems to be a machok, is chazanish. And Ramosha or chazanish seems to say, no, that's also a mesorah, and therefore we can't change things. But well, Ramosha says, no, that could have been based on the science of our, their time. And now, we have to go by our science all the time. So we see different approaches when there's a apparent contradiction, there's an apparent conflict between what the Gemara says is happening in science and what the Gemara tells us. And therefore, the different ways are more, you have the Tshuva Tarashpa, the Yam Shel Shlomo, Rav Koko are more skeptical on the science. Others are not so much as skeptical on the science, except they claim that once Chazal said it, that was the natural state. That's what the revealed thing was. It's all God wanted us to know at the time. And that, and since the Lacha was Paschal then, that's the way it remains. And I say it depends. If it's based on tradition, yeah. But if it's based on the doctors of their times, and now the times have changed, so therefore Nishtan HaTev and Nishtan HaDin. And in fact, that's, um, we have the Gemara in Shabbos about how Horei Kina B'Shabbos. We have the Gemara in Shabbos that um, you have the, the Gemara in Shabbos that says if you kill a king on Shabbos you putter. Why you putter? And the Rama because everyone knows it, it's a biblical prohibition to kill an animal on Shabbos and Tila Shishama. That's only an animal that was born from a mother, from an egg. But but everyone knows why he start spontaneous generated that come from sweat and therefore if you kill a lice on Shabbos you're put their eye today and in the 1700s in Louis Pasteur he went ahead and he disproved spontaneous generation so what do we do with the Gemara? The Gemara says you ought to kill a lice on Shabbos and yet based on the fact based on spontaneous generation and yet we know it doesn't apply so therefore, so therefore the some will say so maybe so maybe 
they thought then there was spontaneous children. Now that we know that it's not, so perhaps then the halacha should be that it's mutter. Another is um, that the Dor Haravi has his own approach. Something has to do with the has to do with the Chazanish about that that if that if Chazal were if at the time it was assumed that spontaneous generation was correct, then we have to follow them even now. On the other hand, you have um, other approaches. No, kind of like. I guess it's similar to Rav Desler in the sense that Rav Shlomo Zalman or Rav Shulchan is no. It, if the Gemara says the Horeg Kina B'Shabbos is Pater and we're assuming it's a tradition, so therefore we have to come up with another reason then why it's still Mutter. If we, if we know it's not spontaneous generation, so it must be like Rav Desler suggesting that over there, but that's Rav Shlomo Zalman, that no, that Chazal were aware of there were, of course there were eggs, but they couldn't be seen. It's like right now I'm swallowing bugs all the time, but the only bugs that are prohibited ones I could see. So apparently what it means to say is it was so small it couldn't be seen, but not that it was, and that's why even, but it's not considered killing a bug because it's um, it's not one that I could see, and therefore that's why Horekina B'Shab is as much as, therefore you preserve the halacha as well as welcome the new science of the time. And that's the whole issue as well with the worm and the fish had the same issue where the, are the worms coming from inside the fish, outside the fish. That was the whole discussion as well of spontaneous um, uh, generation. You know, we dealt with the issue of Mitzitza. You know, Mitzitza was an additional challenge because it was well. Um, on one hand, we said, watching the child before Amigla, that's a pure health issue, so that gets dropped. We don't do it on Shabbos, like like the therapies. But Mitzitza, apparently, we assume it's part of the Mila process, and we still do it, even though, according to modern science, it doesn't have any therapeutic value. But according to the Gemara, it does. So we go with Chumrah, you know, in in that direction. In terms of the Kfura, we assume it was built in. That was a tradition on the definition of death. And while therapies were, and therefore we don't follow necessarily what the doctors, we don't necessarily follow what the doctors of the Talmud said, and to conclude, as Rav Shacht always liked saying is, we follow what the, what the rabbis of the Talmud did. The rabbis of the Talmud spoke to the scientists of that time, and they went with the scientists of that time. Pashas, if it's a scientific issue today, and it's based on erroneous information, not erroneous, that's that we find now, so then perhaps we'll go with the new science and depending what the case is, whether it's, it, if it's Nishtana, the reality is that perhaps Nishtana had dinner as well, and that depends on all the different cases um, we've been discussing.